Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. This is the fourth lecture of this series, Communication Skills. My name is Lukman Shah, and this lecture is about conclusion of communication. What I have stated and started in the first three lectures, I will conclude it in this lecture. And the aim of this lecture is to familiarize class with the concept of communication and its various aspects and the overall impact. The sequence of this lecture is as shown on the slide. Classification of communication, receiver versus medium, verbal and nonverbal, oral, spoken and virtual components of communication, principles of communication, barriers to communication in question and answer session. So classification on the basis of receiver. The first is inter intrapersonal communication. The second is interpersonal, then group communication, and then mass communication. And on the basis of medium, verbal communication, which is further divided into written and spoken. And the non-verbal communication, the signs, gestures, symbols, and movements, and facial expression. Classification on the basis of receiver, the first intrapersonal. It includes the aside, self-talking, thinking, planning, the cognitive process, the mental process, and it precedes, it always uh, occurs before the interpersonal. When we talk with uh, others, so uh, before talking with others, we think it, we plan it. It is a sort of preparatory stage and it affects the interpersonal. Now the interpersonal, that is the second, this is when a person is out of him or herself, and it is always between the two. It is always conversational in tone and can be in form of interviews, it can be in form of dialogues, and if it is in form of written message, then there should be a reader. Then group communication, when there are more than two persons involved in any conversation or communication that is called group communication, it can be uh, in sort of conversation, a debate, uh, and uh, it can comprise of small groups and large groups, uh, and it can be a class, an institute, or an organization, any mob, etc. Then mass communication, this in this message is for large group and not for a specific. Uh, this is for all, and it is done through the publication, through print media, through electronic media, through large numbers. Then classification, the basis of medium. The first verbal, when there are uh, there is the use of words. So we are in the domain of verbal communication and verbal communication can be carried out through spoken or written form. The nonverbal, the appearance, the signs, the gestures, the symbols, all are included in nonverbal communication. A verbal communication, the first aspect of verbal communication is oral or spoken. And in it, uh, the use of words are mandatory and when there is speaking, there will be listening. So listening and speaking are correlated activities. And it is simple and easy in construction. We can talk, we can speak uh, ev uh, everywhere, we, uh, according to the situation, according to the context. And it is always conversational in tone. Uh, it always flourish and enhance the interpersonal relationship. It is less technical and less complex in. Uh, when it comes to the uh, con conveying or sharing of information. Uh, uh, spoken form have no permanent record. It is flexible in nature and less in uh, formalities. The method of verbal uh, oral communication, uh, there are two, two ways to carry out it. One, in, one is internal and the other is external. In internal, it is uh, in face-to-face -face interview instruction or meeting mode and in external it can be carried out through meetings, conferences, seminar, telephone conversation, video conferencing and presentation all are included in oral external. The verbal the advantages of oral spoken communication, it is immediate in nature, it saves time, quick, in feedback because if I am talking to somebody, I'm asking to somebody. So after listening that he will immediately reply. Flexible, it is flexible in nature. We can adopt it according to the situation. Simple in construction, suitable for large number of people. That is time saving and economical. And the most important aspect of spoken is socializing factor. 
in organization, in private and in official life. Then verbal dis disadvantages of spoken, risk of message, message distortion, can be misleading, no permanent record, less concise men are to retain in the listen, a listener memory. Then written, verbal, the second aspect of verbal is written. Again, the use of words, permanent and record, once the thing is written, so that will be exist and sustain for a longer time. More formal than uh, when it comes to the formality, to the official, to the legal matters, so always written mode of communication is adopted. Feedback is delayed a bit in this mode of communication, suitable for long messages. And the method of written communication internally, it can be carried out through memorandum, staff newsletter, internet, fax, email, reports, minutes of meeting, form, questionnaire, notice graphs, and charts, and externally, letter, the report, customer letter, leaflet, brochure, email, advertisement, invitation, fax, press release or the mode of external written communication. Now, the advantage of written, it has permanent record, we can keep it for long, it is well planned and organized, can be long and complex messages, and we can use it in multiple direction at the same time. Now, comparison between these two, the spoken feed, in spoken feedback is immediate, uh, in written feedback is delayed. In spoken, uh, we use normally shorter words and shorter sentences, and in written, the longer words and longer sentences are used. Spoken is informal in nature, written is formal in nature. In spoken, focus on interpersonal relationship, in written, the focus is on the content of message. In spoken, you use the body gestures, the facial ex expression, the movements, but uh, when it comes to the written, so we use punctuation instead. Convey less technical information when it comes to the spoken. When we want to convey technical and complex information, then we should adopt and normally uh, adopt the mode of written communication. Construction is simple in spoken. Construction is complex. Spoken is flexible in nature and appearance of a person is important. And in written, the construction is complex and the appearance of a person is not necessary because when we are reading, so the person is not present in front of few people. In nonverbal communication, verbal communication is often referred to body language and it includes gesture, posture, movements of hands and head and eye contact and it always adds something to the meaning of the message. Important aspect of oral or spoken communication important when it comes to the face-to-face -face conversation. In speaking, information can be conveyed non-verbally as well as verbally. Now appearance, appearance, the clothing, hairstyle, the neatness, uh, the dress, each and everything include in this appearance then things uh, what we have in our hand uh, the glasses the headgear uh, etc the watch or are things which uh, add something to the appearance then surrounding the room size location decoration furniture then looks overall personality gain the overall uh, personality factor and all these things add something to the communication in oral communication the appearance of person has a great importance Communication components, when it comes to the communication process, so these factors and components will always be present in communication context. Every message begins with context. Context is situation, setting, or circumstances. The need of the communication. You know, communication is always need-based. That needs is called context. Then encoder is equal to sender. Sender of a message is called encoder or sender. If the sender is a writer, then the message will be in written. If the sender is speaker, the message will be in oral form. Message, the core idea, information, it can be verbal, spoken, or written. It can be non-verbal, unspoken. Then comes the medium, medium and channel to convey a message, conversation, letter, real phone call, radio, TV, etc. All the more of the medium and channel of message transmission. Then decoder or receiver. And decoder, receiver of the message, he may, uh, can be a reader or listener or watcher. And then feedback, receiver response to the sender and it was an essential part of when it comes to the effectiveness of uh, communication. Then communication principles. These are called seven C's of communication. Seven 
because they are seven in numbers in C's because e every principle or every this word is start with the letter of C like completeness, conciseness, concentration, concentration, correctness, clarity, C and concreteness. And uh, there is a separate standalone lecture about these principles of communication and I will explain and elaborate all these seven C's in that lecture. So uh, for now it is sufficient that we had in mind that there are seven C's and what are these names. So moving on to next barriers to communication. Problems personal or professional due to miscommunication. Uh, these are always occur when there is miscommunication. Miscommunication caused by factor called barrier in communication. The hindrance, the rokawat, we can term it in Urdu. So barrier in communication may, may be from the sender, receiver or the circumstances. And communication barrier or barriers arise during the communication process. And this always confused the listener, the reader, the creator, and create a sort of misunderstanding. And they are as following improper encoding. When we encode, when we use the wrong language, in fact, so that is called improper. The linguistics feature of communication is very important. If someone uh, wants to communicate with a Chinese person and he is communicating in Urdu, so definitely there is a sender, there is a receiver, there is a, medi a medium, there is a language and there is uh, an information. But there is the barrier, which barrier, improper encoding because Chinese person will be unable to understand the Urdu. Then bypassing, this is the second barrier to communication and it arises when the sender assign a meaning to any written or spoken stretch of communication and the receiver get it as another meaning. Jaise hum kehte hain, mera ye matlab nahi tha. Aap mera matlab nahi samjhe. Aap ne mera galat matlab samjha. So when the sender is assigning one meaning and the receiver is uh, uh, deducing or comprehending and understanding a different meaning. In that condition, this barrier is called bypassing. Then frame of reference. Each and everybody has its own personality, its own bent of mind, education, and tendency. So when we want to communicate to somebody, so we should uh, put ourselves in the shoes of that particular person. So getting in the shoes of other means that putting uh, the, uh, the sender is putting himself or herself in the position of the receiver. Then we will be able to communicate effectively. Otherwise, for example, I am, for example, I being a teacher, if I want to communicate with kids of five or six years, so definitely I should come to, uh, to the level of these five or six year age or 10 year age as compared to when I am communicating to the elder, to the 20th or 25 years of age students. So this is called frame of reference, that frame of reference is sort of a vision of the world and we should visualize uh, the word as it is n n according to the reality, not uh, according to our perception. Then physical destruction, it includes the noise. Uh, for example, if, uh, uh, outside there is a noise, the music uh, uh, or uh, other side of uh, a destruction. So that will always uh, hindrance the communication. It is called barrier. And then this physiological and emotional interference. Uh, this, is the, uh, this is a sort of uh, the, some sort of inner inner feeling of any person, like the sadness, the joyness. Uh, a person is happy, or he is overcharged, he, uh, he is weeping, he is laughing, uh, he or she is. So all these factors will uh, affect uh, communication uh, flow, and uh, it will be a. a in term, we can take it in terms of barrier because it will ha uh, these factors will hand hindrance the communication process and cultural differences. For example, if a Pakistani person uh, wants to communicate with the uh, American or with the Britain, uh, USA, or uh, uh, someone in England or in Africa, so definitely they have their own culture, and we have our own. And this culture differences will be a sort of hindrance because we will be unable to communicate them because for communication, we should have the proper coding 
we should have a frame of reference and we should have a sort of intimacy with the uh, culture of that particular countries no this is all from my side if you had something in your mind and you can ask